Now let's go over a few examples of unstable angina or anstemia on EKG. I'll approach each EKG systematically in order for you to develop the habit of always analyzing each EKG in the same manner in order not to miss anything. If you'd like, you may pause the EKG before we go through it together and you could try to work it out by yourself and then listen to what I have to say. Here is a reminder of the systematic approach to the EKG. Always use these steps in order to properly approach each EKG and to avoid missing out on important information. Here is an EKG of a 64-year-old diabetic man who presented to the ER with two hours of retrosternal pressure-like chest pain radiating to both arms and diaphoresis. The heart rate is about 75 beats per minute. The rhythm is sinus as the P wave is upright in leads 1 and 2 and negative in AVR. The axis is normal as it is positive in leads 1 and 2. The P wave and the QRS complex are of normal size and width. The PR interval is normal. The T waves are clearly abnormal. There are deep T wave inversions in leads V1 through V6 as well as leads 1 and AVL. The territories involved are therefore the septal, anterior, and lateral walls. Also, the QT is prolonged, measuring clearly more than half of the RR. There is no ST segment elevation. These findings are consistent with anterolateral subendocardial ischemia due to plaque rupture in the proximal LAD. These deep anterior T-wave inversions are called Wellens sign, named after Dr. Hein J.J. Wellens. It is often due to subtotal occlusion of the proximal LAD. This is an EKG of a 78-year-old lady with no past medical history who presented with a few days of on and off epigastric pain. There is sinus rhythm at a rate of about 72 beats per minute. The axis is normal as it is positive in leads 1 and 2. The P wave and the QRS complex are of normal size and width. The PR is normal. The QT seems normal. There is marked ST depression and T wave changes in leads V1 to V4. This is consistent with anteroseptal ischemia, again due to an LAD subtotal occlusion. Here's an EKG of a 45-year-old obese male presenting with chest pain and nausea. There's clear sinus bradycardia at a rate of about 45 to 50 beats per minute. The axis is leftward as it is positive in 1 and negative in 2. The P wave and the QRX complex are of normal amplitude and width. The PR is normal. The QT seems normal. There is marked T wave inversions in the inferior leads 2, 3 AVF as well as the lateral leads V5 and V6. This is consistent with infralateral ischemia. Also note the Q waves in the inferior leads represent an old infarct in that territory. The culprit here is likely the right coronary artery. 